it's great to see LA relevance. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. I mean, I feel that way about New York having lived there and you live there as well, mm-hmm. but the Knicks have been like decades of irrelevance. Now you have two teams in LA that are both high level, at least look high level and relevant, but the better of the two teams right now, the team that you would predict to go further in the playoffs right now would be which Clippers or Lakers. I thought Clippers at the beginning of the season, just because I, I, I knew how some of those guys fit together. And I kind of sensed how Kawhi and Paul George would fit on this team. I did not foresee how quickly the Lakers would gel. The LeBron and Anthony Davis dynamic, Dwight Howard playing well, and we'll see how long that lasts. They've really played well. And I really cautioned people that first game of the season. They were like, oh, like, look at the Clippers. I said, that, first of all, the Clippers, I think, are going to be the best team in the league. And the Lakers are right behind them. So um, I really do believe, and I know we've talked about this before, I think those are the top two teams in the, the, the league. And I, and I, and I think we're going to see, for the, for the first time, a hallway series, which we have not seen here before. Okay. Can, can you just pump the brakes <laughs> on the Lakers we're stuff? six games in. This is <laughs> fantastic. Look at that, that, that Shaq Kobe. That's hate, like, like Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> Lakers Twitter hates me almost as much as Nick's Twitter. It's well, you close. were right last season because you were the first guy right. that I remember that, I, that you said they're not going to make the playoffs. And I still think if they were healthy, they would have made the playoffs. Yeah, you were the first like, guy that I remember saying you're like they're not gonna make the playoffs. What's that cliche about horseshoes and hand grenades? You, like, still, you, you don't think this team's not gonna? You know, they're, they're for sure gonna make the playoffs, no, right? I, I, and like we we kind of chatted about it media day. Yeah. I know one thing is the clip that went out there. We talked about this in the first hour that went kind of quasi viral on me was me saying that the the Lakers have a better chance of missing the playoffs and winning a championship. Exactly. I still think that's true um, because I can't get fully invested in this Laker team when two of their wins have come against Charlotte and Memphis. No, no, but, don't look at the wins, but just look at how they're playing. Like, yeah. uh, Does it look like this could be a, a championship contending team? And I think if you just watch them play, they're a championship contending team. I, I think if LeBron gets the playoffs, you can't bet against exactly. him. Like, you know, LeBron in the postseason is still the scariest player out there. I know yeah. Kawhi Leonard has proven himself to be a great postseason player, but LeBron in a seven-game series, I- I'm not betting against him, I especially am, with talent around him. But, Chris, and we've talked about this, I am fascinated by D- Dwight Howard because for the first time in his career, he's really being told this is your role. He's not being brought in to be like, you could be the star. Like, there is no chance of him being a star on this team. The, he has a specific role. He has embraced that role, and he's played really well. I mean, he's giving them exactly what they need. He has played exceptionally well for most of the start of the season. And I will admit, if this continues, I was dead wrong on Dwight Howard. Yeah. Because well, most of the league, too. Most of the league, but it was an earned distinction. 100%. I mean, you look back, what was contract. it, two years ago? I want to say, when was he in Charlotte? Was it two years ago? So, I mean, he's played for six teams in six years. Like, I know, and yeah. the teams he hasn't played for. Like, <laughs> Brooklyn like, had him for yeah. a split second. Memphis yeah. just bought him out. But he was in Charlotte, and he played 81 games that year. Oh. And he averaged 16 and 12. It was three years ago. Mm-hmm. Averaged 16 and 12. And he had one team that wanted to sign, the Washington yeah. Wizards. Mm-hmm. They wanted to sign him. Yeah. Like, you are still, <laughs> like... Was it late tw- early 30s, let's say, when yeah. he was in Charlotte? Maybe even late 20s? And you averaged 16 and 12? Like, take the name Dwight yeah, right. Howard away from it? 16 and 12 over 81 games, you're getting, like, a max contract exactly. from some teams. And you had the Wizards out there being like, you know, do we want to guarantee the second year? Do we want to? Golden State, before they got to Marcus Cousins. They're like, they kicked the tires on that. Yeah. Like, nah, we're good. We're taking the, the Cousins guy from Sacramento yeah. who's got the blown Achilles. Like, yeah. we're going to go with that guy. I mean, I, I just... I'm stunned by by how well Dwight Howard has played. And, you know, the book on him, Arash, and I'm not sure what you found in talking to people, but when he was in Charlotte, it wasn't so much like he's this cancer and he shows up late and he do all this. It was the passive-aggressive yeah. stuff. It was like the occasional weird locker room speech where he tried to be a leader. It was he's on, awkward. <laughs> it was on the floor. Yeah. On the floor, it was like, you know, he doesn't get a touch from Kemba Walker, and he's putting his face in his jersey he's going, so bah, 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 bah. And then, as one coach down there told me, he's like, the play calls for a pick and roll, he picks and pops and shoots his broke bleep jump shot. Yeah. Like, that was the line <laughs> from the coach that I talked to down there. So it was it was little things that bothered people about oh, yeah. But he seems to, he is, for the first time, practicing what he preached. Exactly. And for him to get a non-guaranteed contract, for them to basically say, 
we're going to bring you in last chance corral. If you don't make it, like you're done. And he's really embraced that role. And again, I mean, the first time here, it's like night and day. That relationship he had with Kobe was terrible just for the, the, the examples you brought. I mean, when I heard when, when he was being recruited to come back and they were like, well, Kobe's going to be in the meeting. I'm like, Kobe's going to be in the meeting. Kobe's going to tell him to like, get, get, get the hell out of here. So it's, it's, it's good to see. You want to see players like that do well. And so I'm very happy for Dwight. You sat down with Kobe recently yeah. for a column there. What does Kobe say now about that relationship? He realizes that it was just a bad fit at that time, but he's happy for him. And he realizes that like certain guys need to be, I mean, he basically had his, if the Lakers did not sign him, Chris, and you know this, he may not be in the league. So when you're in that position, you kind of have that moment of clarity where you're like, okay, all that stuff I did before, like I got to stop it. So like the things that people don't like about me, as much as that's still me, I can't do that. And this is my role. So he's happy for him. Um, you know, Kobe's just kind of, he, he's doing his own thing. And, uh, but yeah, I think, I think he realizes that was a bad fit at a really b- bad time. I still think, Arash, that we're talking to Arash Markazi, LA Times columnist joining us here, Rich Eisen Show. I do think that the Lakers, for them to be successful, Anthony Davis has to play center like 75% of the time. Oh. And that's especially true with Kyle Kuzma now back in the lineup. Their best lineup to me is Davis, LeBron, Kuzma mm-hmm. in that front court and fill in the blanks at, yeah. at the backcourt positions. Danny Green, of course, and somebody else. Uh, but what do you think? I mean, is Dave, yeah. Davis is notoriously reluctant to be a five-man. Well, so here's the thing. You're not going to start him at center. You're not going to call him a center, but you're basically going to pull him aside and say, you're going to play center. Mm-hmm. You know, So for whatever reason, he doesn't want to be known as the center. So listen, when, when you have that big, you know, you know, when we name the starting lineup and you're like introduced, you're not the center, but... D'Anthony, when we are in this position to, to close out a game, you're going to be playing that position. Same with LeBron at point guard. He's not going to start at point guard. He's going to play point guard. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be the primary ball. They yeah. do miss Rondo in the lineup. I mean, sure. Rondo, yeah, his exactly. basketball IQ is through the charts, and having another playmaker out there is smart. I am happy for, before we go to the Clippers, I'm very happy to see Frank Vogel get kind of the positive attention yeah. he deserves. I have been riding the Frank Vogel train is a good coach. I think he's far been he's much more the coach we saw in Indiana yeah. that led the Pacers to back to back conference finals than the coach we saw over two dysfunctional years in Orlando. Yeah. This is a good basketball coach that if you listen to him yeah. and you buy into what he's saying, he will not steer you in a wrong direction. That's the one thing that I said. I said it's a popularity contest in Los Angeles and everyone like loved Luke because of but but the thing about um Luke is that he's not quite a great coach and I said with, a, with with Frank Vogel you're getting a fantastic experienced coach so regardless of what they brought in in terms of players just having Frank Vogel as your coach this season is huge for more of the Rich Eisen show tune to audience channel 239 on direct TV for free on BR live or download the Rich Eisen show app